right so some people may prefer a carbon fiber frame because they do look quite cool but it's hiding all these bikes best features and we do like bikes to look factory factory standard so uh, with an aprilia you really got to bring out its original colors so we don't like this we're going to take it off only thing is we've done the left that we've done the other side uh, and it was a nightmare it took us nearly all day today and all night yesterday uh, the guy who's had this fitted has not done it correctly what he's done is use some kind of looks like black tiger glue silicon glue which you use for fitting body panels and on cars and you do not ever dream of using such a product to stick one of these on sticky back tape or a few little dollops of silicon may hold that firmly or in fact velcro but this guy We'll show you, we're going to remove this and we're going to have to wreck it to get it off. We'll show you what he's done. And um, some people really just should not go near motorbikes. Right, we're going to have to rip this off. It's going to take us a while, but you'll see the devastation this guy's caused. Okay, so here's an update on where we are so far with it, and doesn't that look an absolute mess? We brought the bike inside because it's getting late, it's cold out there. We have been at this for a long time now, quite a few hours. Um, we're tired. This is, I've never seen anything like this. We're having to drive a wooden wedge so we don't scratch any of this frame down the back of it to shatter this off, and then this glue what the view is the guy like said, the guy who put this on uh fits body kits to cars permanently and to put this amount of this stuff on or use this stuff on the on this such a, on this motorcycle it, it's beyond it's absolutely beyond anything i can imagine I've, i I've seen some stupid, stupid stuff in my time, but this is incredibly stupid. It's even gone right under here. This would have just required a little bit of silicon glue, maybe, or just some Velcro or some sticky back tape. It wouldn't have come off, but take, this is it. When when you, you, leave, you take motorcycles, motorbikes to people who bodge cars, to fit something and they've not got a clue what they're doing but yeah this is just awful but we'll get him right again a few more hours to get this off and then we've got to get this crap off we've already done the other side and we had to we tried the heat gun but that wasn't budging this stuff it's tough stuff we tried the wd-40 trick did nothing we've had to just carefully pick all this away and then we got some uh, silicon bathroom silicon remover. Right, we'll get back to you when we've ripped this bit off. So we're still chiseling away. Uh, it's, it's extremely difficult, and it's getting even more difficult. I mean, just look the uh, the amount of this stuff. It will not peel off. It's solid. We can't use a heat gun. I don't think the heat gun will do anything anyway because we don't want to blister the paint on the frame but uh, is it, it's right underneath here it's underneath there, why would you do that? I'm so glad the guy who put this on is not a surgeon or a MP or a pilot because I think there will be a lot of destruction around but yeah, it's definitely an absolute muppet We've got all the carbon fibre off now. We're applying some of this no nonsense sealant remover. It is the only thing that seems to be working. It doesn't glide it off. It seems to help. So we've got to leave this on for uh, at least 15 minutes. The longer you leave it, the better. But I don't want it to start. I don't think it does, but start attacking the paint underneath. I don't think it will. Um, yeah, so I'll leave this on. Put some more up there. And get the rest of this stuff off. Idiot.
All right, welcome to the spray bowl. We've got all the silicon off the black silicon. The frame may look okay on camera, but we've just done some a few touch-ups with a brush. Uh, things we can't do is this here. Look, it looks awful there. I'll try and zoom in. There we go. You can see some little spots where we've touched in with a brush, but it's just not acceptable. And there's a nasty bit here, look, which we're going to get. There's a few bits down here which uh, we've, we've done with the brush. You can't see them. We're just going to dab some clear coat on them after. But what we're going to have to do in today is painting this entire portion of the frame here. It's still got some chips up there, which is probably common, to be fair. We don't want those in there. What I'm going to do is I'm, we're going to mask and film the whole bike, and we're going to expose this area. We've got everything out of the way. We're going to mask it around here, around these welds, and then we're going to shoot some colour all over. We're going to start with these little touch-ups first, then shoot some colour to blend the whole thing. Then we'll clear coat it, and that'll be it. Right. We've got the colour mix, we're going to get this masked up and then uh, let's shoot some colour on it, eh? Yeah. You going to give it a go? Yeah. Alright then. Right, some scissors there, reverse it. We can chop off some thick with these. What I can do is just cut some of them and roll them back up. Stop. Because this stuff, to be honest with you, you know this stuff, it goes long that way, <laughs> but just chop it. Let's chop enough off here. Right here. Let's have a look. Yeah, a little bit, a bit further that way, that's that it. Way? That yeah. way? It's cheap stuff and there's lots of it, so. And then let's roll that bit back up over there. Yeah. And this stuff just keeps on folding and folding and folding. Because it's actually long uh, this way. Some wet sand in it with 500 grit to get all this pitting off. You see the primer underneath, it's not affected the primer. Some people think that these frames are anodized, and we're going to put that fat to rest that they are painted. They are painted, it is paint, and I'm sanding now, I'm hitting primer. And anodized stuff does not go like this and this is the bit that bubbled isn't it yeah really thin as well we're hitting the frame now look how many now so will we need to sand the whole thing back to nothing no or just this area that you're so doing now extra surface this area is because it's rough you want to do in so yeah, this area row only. The rest of it will just hatch the surface of it. Mm -hmm. Might just leave it like that. What, and never paint it? Yeah. Everybody, everybody will look at my bike then. Okay, I'm giving this a wipe now. I've gone over it with 500 grit and 800 grit on the rest of it. I'm just going to wipe this spooge off. I want this to dry now so I can see it all. It shouldn't be glossy, it should be like a matte colour. So I've hatched all the, the surface. May have to get may get some primer on that. There's a little bit there still to dig at on here. Right, 
need to make sure this is dry as well because when we're spraying we don't want it to flicker so we don't want any water flicking up at it right then i think i could probably get some primer on this here get some primer right now mm -hmm. okay right i'm going to primer this area only i don't want masses of overspray so What we're going to do okay. I'm trying to cut out a shape roughly a similar shape to that and then uh, that should do actually just so I don't get loads of overspray and I can divert this all over just like that right should we get our masks on we get the masks on this is going to go it really matters most of the time because you're standing in there All right, I've just uh, gone over this primer now it's dried. I've gone over it with some 800 grit wet, well damp, slightly wet. I don't want to saturate all of this and get uh, water all over here because what happens is when we're painting, it's because it will flat like that and then it'll throw water all over the work and make a mess of it. So we've hetched all this primer, it's ready to go. It's all blended down here. We're going to go over it with our tack cloth and a tack cloth just to get for any dust before we apply any colour but first we're going to mix our paint give that a quick wipe now that should gather up any dust right mix some paint they're always stuck together these it's like getting a cup out of the Costa coffee machine at the services I always keep my tack cloth back in its wrapper as well. It keeps it nice and sticky. If you don't, then they'll dry out. Right, I'll give this a shake. This is our colour. Put something to open it with. Scissors will do. I'm a little bit out of stirrers and stuff like that at the moment, so. Unprepared is what I am. So I'm only going to pour out probably about 50 ml of paint up to there. In fact, I, I can pour out. Uh, I could pour out 100 ml because what I don't use, I can pour back into here, even though it's got thinners in it. Right, you want to come closely on here? So I'm going to get this. There's more than enough colour going to go in there. Believe me, that's more than enough. But what we don't use will be going back in the tin. Oh, let's give this a wipe as well so the lid goes on better. So this colour is not actually gold. It's, it's some kind of yellow. It's been formulated specially because I can't find the original colour. Next up, I don't want that clear coat. Thinners. Where's my thinners? There we go. I want some thinners now. I do, I, I always go over this every time I'm painting on the video, but two to one ratio, two to one. That's where you start at. But to be honest with you, I, I will put 30% in. Sometimes, if it, if it doesn't feel right, I'll add a bit more thinners. I can go 50-50 with the thinners, to be honest with you. I'll just get some to stir that way. Something metallic to stir it with. 
I know how this feels, if it's thin enough or not. I usually go a little bit thinner than the manufacturers do, I recommend. It's about right, is that? That's how it feels. Quite a messy job, isn't it? Okay. So I'll get my strainer. I'll bang that in the gun. I'll just grab a strainer. Right then. I've cleaned out my gun and every time I paint, I always clean out the gun. No matter if I cleaned it out before I put it away. Run some thinners through it, check it all. And try and use one gun for each colours. If you're using dark colours, have a specific gun for that. If you're using white, then I only have a gun for white, I would. Pouring all that, we're not going to go right to the very top of the container. I'm going to spill that out. Right, I'm going to get my mask on. And what I'm going to do is shoot some of this at that. I've not got any uh, test paper. We'll shoot some of this, get our fan co correct, and then we'll, uh, we're good to go. Let's have a quick, quick feel. We'll blow some air through it. See that colour forming up there? In fact, I'll get this down here. Get this box down here. Are we recording? On this small gun here, on this small gun, I've got my air pressure going at just under 30, about 29 to 30. I don't go over 30 ever. But that's where my pressure at on this uh, HVLP, uh, LVLP gun, low volume, low pressure. If I'm doing touch ups, low volume, low pressure gun. So I've got my fluid, my fan is all the way in, so I've got a circle. And my fluid is barely out, so I'm spraying now. You watch that pick up. That's full trigger. So I'm blending colour in. Then, as I go on, I will, uh, as I build up my layers, I will then uh, adjust more fluid to get a full coverage. So I'm going to get my mask on. I'm going to go over these bits first, and then this.
About two minutes. So look on. Let's look on. Right, that's all flashed off now. Um, what we're going to do, just show you some of the areas we've done. So we've done a little touch up here. Some up here on this side. I think there was one there. That was one of the worst ones. Well, this was the worst one. I'm going to keep painting this. You can still see the primed area. I was waiting for that. When that disappears, we're going to go over the whole thing. But you could see the colour match already. Perfect, perfect colour. We've gone up here. Also with it. There's a little one there I missed. I'll go over that. What I'm going to do is. Um, Finally, I'm going to peel back this tape here so I can just blend it into the frame, into the weld. Right, we'll go over this with a tack cloth and then um, we should be good for another coat. Okay, we are almost there. I'm going to put one more coat in and you can see that all that primed area has now disappeared. You kind of, on the camera, looking for the screen here, it kind of looks a little bit pale. It's not picking the colour up right, but it's actually deeper than that. Um, for the final coat, because I'm blending now, I'm going to peel this back. I've not painted beyond these welds here. So I just want to blend it so I don't end up with the line. So I'm not going to paint over this line. I'm going to paint up to this weld. That's what I'm going to do. Not over it. Okay. Let's go for it. Right, this is all flashed off and cured. I'm going over it with this, uh, it's like antibacterial surface wipe. I've got plenty of these, believe it or not. It won't harm the paint, and I actually go over between coats with these. Or between, I said, two or three coats, I'll go over it with this. It gets all that roughness off, all that dry dust. It's like washing it, giving it a slight polish. And any, any dust that's settled in there, layer by layer, this will just... Pull it out and I'll do this before I go over it with a clear coat. Once that's done, once that's done, I'll lightly not press on but I'll go over it with a little towel just to dry it off because you can leave watermarks in here. We're not putting any more colour on now. That's all cool, all good. And then one last thing is the tack cloth. Lightly pull that over it because the towels could have left fine fibres in there. I, I don't like to go over this briskly because you can create static 
and it will attract dust. The thing is with clear coating, which we're going to do now, sorry. The thing is with clear coating, it's thick and it catches stuff. The overspray catches dust in the air and it'll just go straight down onto your work. That looks all right. I'm going to take a close look at that. We'll mix some clear coat. Okay, clear coat. Well, we've got two cups here. Just a second. They were absolutely jammed together. Clear coat, right. Here's the clear. We're going to go 50 mil, two to one ratio. Hardener. And a little bit over there, so I'm going to fill the hardener up to here. Don't put too much hardener in and too much thinners or you might just get a uh, hazy finish. I'm used to mixing this. I can just tell most of the time without um, looking at the measurements, but in clear coat I like to just get things bob on. I can mix some more if I need to. I don't want to waste this, you see. I end up throwing lots of clear coat away. Or should I say disposing of it, which I do. I pour it into uh, a box and let it solidify. Right. Get that in the gun. Unfortunately, I won't be able to video this clear coating. Unfortunately, I won't be able to video this clear coat and I'll just show you after because uh, I'm using the phone to record with. I've got not got a cover for it and the clear coat will, uh, will get onto the phone screen and camera and ruin it. So I need to cover myself up. I always wear a hood when I'm clear coating. Definitely a full face mask and get some gloves on. You do not want this epoxy stuff in your lungs. It will kill you. It, set, it gets in your lungs, the vapour, and it sets hard and it will kill you. You don't want that on your lungs. So make sure you're totally covered up safety. Right, I'm going to get prepared, get some clear on, then we'll come back to it, see what it looks like when it's finished. And here it is, all finished, clear coated. Really proud of that, happy with that job. Again, uh, the colour looks a little bit paler on here, but it's not. It's different on the camera to what I can see. It looks absolutely spot on that. Maybe... Um, the original's a little bit more yellowy or orangey than this, but that looks beautiful. Really proud of that. It looks like there's not one speck of dust or dirt in there, so I don't think I'm going to have to do any uh, wet sanding and buffing tomorrow. That, that's just straight off the gun. Laser straight. Happy with it. Right, we'll, leave, we'll let that cure overnight. Got the heater on in here. Let that bake, and then we'll rip all this crap off and... Uh, yeah, very happy. Okay, thank you for your constant interest in the work we do here. I'm going to show you the finished product now. The frame has been clear coated. It's nice and shiny. I'm just going to get rid of some dust nibs that are on there in a minute. I'm going to sand it down and polish it even further. Let's take a look. And here it is. Obviously, this is the left-hand side. What a beautiful texture we have got on there. So, we've obviously left this part original. It's got kind of a little bit of a uh, rough uh, finish to it, so we're not going to paint over that. We've, we've touched up a few little chips with the brush around here and around here, here. But the colour match is, is spot on. And you, can, you can see here that uh, where, I, where I had the masking tape, the reason I dragged it back towards the end or well, just so we get a light feathery blend into this, so we don't want a shiny patch around here. That's why we dragged the. That's why we kept the the masking tape quite light and didn't didn't fit it tight to the welds. If we had done that, then we would end up, end up with a line which we'll have to get out. So it blends nice and easy. 
Uh, I've just took the string off these because I was holding those up, but yeah. We've got a little, oh it's gone, I thought it was a dust nib. Right, I'll show you the other side. And believe it or not, yeah, it's going to get polished and waxed so it'll enhance it further. There's not a great deal of work to doing it. I think this side's better. So I did, did the, uh, this side yesterday and the finish is just like glass. Nice, light, gentle coats of clear coat. Don't ever put them on thick. Your first coat, just, just coat it in just like I did with the base coat. I will do a painting tutorial at some point when I get a chance. Uh, my wife, she painted a bar and whites as well. This colour uh, matches the, the Olin's suspension, I believe. So these bits here, I... Uh, I masked over this, well no, what I did with this was I put some um, paint protection film and just cut round it because masking tape just wasn't sticking. Paint protection film, heat gunned it on there, painted over the whole thing and ripped it off and same with this here so it keeps the original look. And again up here you can't really see a transition from the clear coat, this was all masked over, uh, feathered that in, spot on. I think, personally, that looks better than it did from the factory, in my opinion. I think it looks better than it did from the factory. Beautiful. All right, let's get the bike together and um, do some more polishing on the panels. We'll check the fairings out, see if we can do any work on those. See you in a moment. <laughs> 